soil risk. Of all the inputs to the calculator, soil risk has the greatest impact on storage requirements by far. In fact, it is not uncommon for a farm with all high-risk soil to require five to six times the storage volume of the same farm with half the effluent block on low-risk soils. Commonly, the reason for this is that low-risk soils display matrix flow, where the effluent percolates down through the profile in an even manner, exploring the entire soil matrix. However, high-risk soils display a high risk of preferential flow paths down the soil profile, as well as a high risk to surface runoff. Therefore, high-risk soils need a greater moisture deficit than the depth of effluent applied, and with generally very low evapotranspiration rates and higher rainfall during the winter months, large soil moisture deficits can be few and far between, giving little opportunity for effluent irrigation. Low-risk soils, however, only need to wait 24 hours post-rainfall and soil saturation before we can apply effluent. With this in mind, it is well worth the effort to determine if there are any low-risk soils outside the farm's current effluent block that could be brought into it. The Soil Risk tab has a Help button where most dairying soils throughout New Zealand are listed with their associated soil risk. If the actual soil type on farm is known, it can be looked up here. We would also encourage on-farm investigations to help determine soil risk and slope. Dairy NZ has a handy pocket guide to determine soil risk for farm dairy effluent application, which can be used in conjunction with soil maps and on-site soil pits. With so much at stake here, take the time to get soil selection right. Correct entry of soil risk into the three boxes is critical to getting the calculator to understand where and when it can irrigate. Start by determining the actual minimum effluent block area the farm needs. This may be a farm decision based on the desired nutrient application or a regulation-based decision to meet a regional council or consent rule. Whichever way, we would encourage the use of Overseer to do this. Next, enter the area of low-risk soil in the effluent block into the low-risk area box. If the entire effluent block is low-risk soils, just enter the total area in here. Next, if there is a combination of high and low risk soils, then enter the minimum area of high risk soil into the minimum area of high risk soil box. These two boxes should now total the minimum area needed to irrigate to. If the effluent block is larger than the minimum area, then enter the surplus area into the remaining area for irrigation box. Thank you.